For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So next up, uh, we're going to talk about the oxidation or breakdown of branched chain amino acids. Up until now, the location of amino acid breakdown has pretty much almost entirely been in the liver. But with branched chain amino acids, the location of their breakdown is in the muscle, kidney, adipose tissue, and brain, basically all the extra hepatic tissues. Before I answer why, maybe I should answer the question, what are the branched chain amino acids of the BCAAs? Well, they are valine, isoleucine, and leucine, and the reason why is because their side chains have these little branch points in them. Okay, So valine, isoleucine, and leucine, they are the branched chain amino acids. So let's get into this question of why the BCAAs are broken down in these extra hepatic tissues. Well, it's because these tissues have a specific amino transferase called branch chain amino transferase or BCAT uh, that acts on all three of the BCAAs and BCAT is not in the liver. Okay. So what is the reaction that BCAT catalyzes? Well, it's an amino transferase. So it just catalyzes a simple transamination reaction and it produces the alpha keto acids of each of the BCAAs. So let's see how that looks. So we'll start off here at the top with valine. So valine is this amino acid up here, We've got five carbons. We're gonna have the amino transferase reaction so as to get this amino group attached to alpha ketoglutarate, making glutamate and the alpha keto acid of valine, which is two keto isovalerate. Okay, this is just the alpha keto acid version of this. And so that is going to be acted upon by branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex or BC alpha KADH. What a mouthful. Okay, uh, this is pretty analogous to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Uh, we're going to add a coenzyme A and we're going to have uh, an NADH produced and we're going to rip off. Um, this carboxyl group as a carbon dioxide. So we're gonna go from five carbons to four carbons and we'll have this coenzyme A attached. So then this isobutyl-CoA, um, we have a couple redox reactions and a hydraul or a, the addition of uh, water and we'll lose this carbon here as a carbon dioxide. And these three carbons will end up in propanyl-CoA, which of course can go to succinyl-CoA and eventually to the TCA cycle. Okay. So previously we've kind of just showed going from valine all the way to propanyl CoA uh, and succinyl CoA in sort of one gigantic step. It wasn't really like that. It was really going looking like the, more more so like this. Okay. So isoleucine, similar situation. B cat will act on it. Amino transferase reaction. We'll go from this to this. Everything else stays the same. Um, and uh, we get this alpha keto acid version of this alpha amino acid and that can be acted upon by the dehydrogenase complex. So we'll remove this carboxyl group as a carbon dioxide, get an NADH out of it, add a coenzyme A. A lot of those cofactors, FAD, lipo A, and TPP are used just in the same way that they're used in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So we get uh, we go from this six carbon molecule here to this five carbon molecule after losing that one carbon as a carbon dioxide here. And um, now we have this two methyl butyryl CoA and we'll have a few redox reactions. And we're gonna add a coenzyme A here. That coenzyme A will be added basically right here um, to make this part of the molecule come off as an acetyl CoA. And then the orange carbons will end up in propanyl CoA, which can go to succinyl CoA and the TCA cycle. Okay. So that's valine and isoleucine. And then we've got um, leucine here. Pretty much the same idea. BCAT acts on it. Amino transferase reaction. Get that alpha keto acid. That alpha keto acid is 2-keto isocaproate. 
and uh, that'll be acted upon by the dehydrogenase complex. Remove this carbon as a carbon dioxide. Um, and uh, we add the coenzyme A, get an NADH out of it. So we get isobilaryl CoA, which is one carbon less than the two keto isocaproate that we started with. Um, we'll get an FADH2 out of this. And we'll actually add carbon dioxide. So we start off with five carbons there. We add a carbon um, to get six total carbons. Four of those carbons, the orange ones here, end up in acetoacetate. And the two green ones end up in acetyl-CoA. And of course, the acetoacetate, as we saw before, gets turned into acetoacetyl-CoA. Um, the transferase reaction, getting that CoA onto there. And then that acetoacetyl-CoA can be cleaved into two acetyl-CoAs that we see here. Okay. All right. Cool. So now that, that branch chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase complex is regulated, it's regulated specifically by covalent modification uh, according to the concentration of BCAAs in the diet. So um, over here to the left, we've got the, the uh, inactive form of the dehydrogenase complex. And over here to the right, we've got the active form. The inactive form has a phosphate group attached to it. So the way we activate it is by hydrolyzing off that phosphate with a protein phosphatase. And if we want to deactivate the dehydrogenase complex, we'll just add a phosphate that's coming from ADP, and that'll be done by a protein kinase. Okay. So um, how does the concentration of BCAAs in the diet affect this? Well, if there is a, a higher amount of BCAAs in the diet, you want to be able to metabolize them. And so you want the active version. So a high concentration of BCAAs in the diet will stimulate this guy, the active form. And so what generates the active form? Well, the protein phosphatase. So the high concentration of BCAAs will trigger the phosphatase to remove the phosphate and give us the active form. Whereas if there's a lower concentration of BCAAs in the diet, you don't need to metabolize the BCAAs. And so you want the inactive form to be around. And so a lower concentration of BCAAs will stimulate the protein kinase to hydrolyze off a phosphate and give the inactive form. Okay, so this guy triggers this, this guy triggers that. Okay. Now what if there's a defective or deficient um, uh, dehydrogenase? Well, what happens there is that you can't, it, it, it acts on the alpha keto acids. So if it can't act on the alpha keto acids, there will be a buildup of the alpha keto acids in the urine. And uh, that leads to a disease called uh, maple syrup urine disease. And it's named for the smell of the urine. Uh, this is bad because uh, it can impair brain development uh, as well as uh, lead to mental retardation and even death. Okay, So this is another example of amino acid metabolism issues um, uh, causing problems with the nervous system. Okay, uh, The treatment for this deficiency is simply uh, to limit BCAA consumption in the diet. And this is not to be taken as medical advice. This is all approached from a 100% academic perspective. If you have any questions um, and are seeking medical advice, be sure to talk to your doctor. Okay. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful in understanding branched chain amino acids and their metabolism. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.